So now to cut the pommel out of this bar of steel. And if I, uh, come on. Gotta plug it in first. Oh, there's always something. <laughs> This is going to be the pommel, and uh, here, this is how far we got the quillons. Uh, Tom has ground this section here, so it's square, uh, ready for the twist. And uh, I have cut four cuts in this. There's a little bit more work on shaping this for the pommel. One of the, uh, the next things we're going to have to do is drill all the way through the pommel end to end, and then drift it so that it's wider at one end uh, than the other to, to fit the tang. Uh, so that's a big lump of mild steel. This, which is also mild steel, has got the shoulder in it and the hole. And <clears throat> if I just turn it around, you'll see that the hole is not actually bang in the center, but uh, I'm told that this will give the sword character. Joseph started sawing bits for the grip out of a piece of thousand year old bog oak. This was to have an unfortunate ending. And uh, how do we know that that's dead vertical? Using these. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> I shall hold this. And Tom has got the, the coolant standing by, it's just water. It seems to be going through more and more easily, maybe it's getting hotter. Just it nice and gently in slow, we really don't want to drain quite a break this drill bit. Not that they're expensive, but it's such a pain in the ass. This part of the process did bother me a bit because whereas I could see a medieval equivalent of everything else we had done, I'm pretty sure that they didn't have drill bits that could do what we are doing here. It took quite a while. Or well, steam, I suppose it was steam. Yeah. Could have been it. I think it was. Really? Yeah, I don't think it was. Well, there was a definite sudden lurch. That's got to be something. Oh, bugger. And then... When things go wrong. I, I don't think I did anything no, no, different. No, you didn't. Right, so the next task is to drift a hole through this, the pommel, um, so that the tank can move through it. Uh, this is the drifting tool. It's a piece of hardened steel, which as you can see widens, and we're going to drive it through. So we have to put this in the forge, get it nice and hot, and then one person holds it as the other whacks this through. But there is a complication. Unfortunately, the drill bit snapped just before we got all the way through. Now we've drilled it out both ends, but it's still in there. So what we've got to do is we've got to put it over this hole, in the, uh, what's it called, the Pritchard hole? The Pritch Pritchell. Pritchell hole. That's the Pritchell hole and that's the Hardy hole. We're going to stick it over the Pritchell hole and um, hope that it uh, comes out and uh, drops through. Uh, fingers crossed. Okay, where the hell is the drill? We must have encountered it by now. It's actually fishtailing naturally. Uh, yeah, we're upsetting the end. Blacksmith lunch. Yay. We've just countersunk the end there for peeling on. 
we have just lost the tip of the tool for putting the hole in this. And you see now it looks very sort of black and rough. But the way it's taken on the shape of the hole that we were whacking it through, it's, it's halfway to a fishtail already. Now I'm widening the hole in the cross guard in the hope of fitting it accurately to the blade. And I've widened it enough to get it that far. This may take some while. They had a load of German World War II machine gun barrels dredged up from the Rhine, so you could perhaps actually have a sword forged out of Spandaus. Think of that. Now we've come to yet another point of there's no going back. You have to make your mind up and get it right. Um, does that look right in terms of proportion? The cross guard to the length of the, uh, of the, the grip and the positioning of the pommel. Um, and does it feel right? Uh, because what we've been doing is we've been grinding down the tang uh, and the more you grind it, the further up it you can work the pommel. Uh, but if you decide, oh no, I'd like to go back a bit, you can't add metal to the tang. So we can, we can adjust it that way, but not that way. And we've done a few increments down that way and I've picked it up and I've swung it about. And remember, it's a bastard sword. So I'm, sometimes I'll be using it in two hands. And of course I can be gripping the pommel. Uh, I don't have to have my hand on the, on the, on the grip all the time. You can use the pommel usefully uh, as, as a hand grip. And I've also got to imagine myself wearing big gauntlets which of course means that my hands are bigger, bigger and bulkier. Uh, and I've got to think, this is a bastard sword, so what does this feel like in one hand? And uh, we tried it quite a bit. We've actually cut a bit off the end. Uh, we had it right out here, and we agreed that it was, it was too long and that you were, we, were, we were, fighting, were fighting the pommel in one hand, although in two hands it, fit, it felt really good. With a, uh, with a long grip, uh, it becomes a, like a long sword, and it feels, if you're used to long swords, it feels good. Um, but if this is a proper bastard sword, it has to feel reasonably handy in one hand as well. Uh, so we've come, we've come up a bit. Um, but if we go too far, we can't go back. Um, so um, one thing I've got to try to imagine is how big my hands are going to be in gauntlets. And, and how do I know? How do I know how much to add on? Um, I know from HEMA gauntlets that some, some HEMA gauntlets are ridiculously enormous. But this blade's not going to be used for HEMA. So I'm going to be wearing my, my bespoke, gothic, uh, field plate, authentic battle gauntlets. And so I'm adding on about that much. Uh, anyway, does this feel good in one hand? It doesn't feel bad. But if we, sh if we move the pommel up, it's generally better for one hand. And if we leave it long, it's generally better for two. So there you go. It's a bastard sword. It's a compromised sword. Uh, and, uh, well, as for the aesthetics, the proportions, well, what do you think? Uh... Right, so after four and a half days of work, uh, this is how far I've got. Now, I was talking to Tom, uh, the swordsmith, last night, and he said that his record for making a sword, it was a bit simpler than this, but not enormously uh, more simple, uh, was 17 hours. Uh, but that was his absolute record and was quite extraordinary. Uh, he can certainly make swords in downside faster than I can. But for a complete novice, four and a half days in, this is how far I've got. So you can see... Uh, the wooden grip still needs to be made and the next stage is sandpapering. I've got various different uh, grades of grit here and I'll be going from coarse to fine trying to get out the, the black uh, soot that's worked into all these little, little niches here. Uh, we've got a shaped pommel now and we're reasonably happy with how far up the tang that goes. Uh, the very end of that will probably be taken off then that'll be heated and uh, hammered and that'll hold everything together. There are some imperfections. Um, the first twist on the quillons went absolutely beautifully and I was very happy with that and then I mucked up the second twist which is tighter and not quite so symmetrical so uh, there's a but uh, you know it's good 
that it doesn't look too machine made. There is some character, some individuality to this sword. And overall, it's still a, you know, a decent sword. It's, it's straight. Um, there are some imperfections. There's a, there's a little bit of scale that's been hammered in there, and that's not going to come out. Uh, no matter uh, how much uh, work I put in with the, the sandpaper, I'm not going to get that out. That's there forever. Um, but again, it, it shows that it's, it's been hand forged. And you do, in museum examples, see imperfections like that on, on, on actual medieval swords. So I, I don't think I need to be too ashamed. Um, so now I have to sit, and this is going to, I'm going to spend hours. I've been told that it's possible to get it pretty shiny. As you can see, it's already quite shiny, but we'd like it shinier, wouldn't we? Um, I'm told that I can get it quite shiny in about an hour, uh, very shiny in about three hours, and that uh, there is no point at which I should stop. Uh, you just keep working away with finer and finer grit for longer and longer, and it just gets shinier and shinier and shinier until eventually you have a lightsaber. I'm probably going to stop shy of that stage. Uh, right, I don't anticipate this is going to be a tremendously interesting day sitting here and just sanding away at this thing. Um, but at least it's not noisy, so we can enjoy some music. Tell you. Alas, the medieval bog oak had been sawn to conform to a speculative chalk drawing of the hilt and not to the size of the actual finished hilt, so I had to resort to more mundane wood. Can you see what that's done? That little dart. You can oh, see yeah. it's just pushed a little bit of metal in, okay, inwards. Just... It is done. Solid. But how do you know that you've done it properly? Well, there's a very simple test, Lloyd. Um, the blade by itself, if you hold it very tight, will ring. If you put pieces of metal and pieces of wood on here that aren't tight, it will deaden the sound. So, there's a very nice little test. I don't know if you can hear that at home, but it sounds like a pitch, like a, a tuning fork. Ding! It fits! I shall go to the ball. I wanted one of those fancy shaped grips with a pointy wide bit, but this has to be in just the right place and because I didn't have my gauntlets I went for a gently curving bulge instead. I did the grinding of the grip entirely by eye with no tuition and though I say so myself I think I did a damn fine job, for which I was given no praise. We are now approaching another critical stage. I will very soon be adding this, but before that, before that, we're going to be peening on the pommel. Uh, so Tom has taken the last half inch off the tang. He reckons that's about the right amount to leave to hold everything together. Now, you may be familiar with the construction technique where you put the quillons, slide them down the tang, then you put on the, the grip, slide that down the tang, and then you put on the pommel and slide that down, and then peen it all together. The trouble with that is that the thing which determines how far down the tang the pommel goes is the grip, a soft piece of wood. And that's not what we want. We want all the metalwork to be solid first and then uh, for the wood just to be acting as a grip, not actually determining, determining that distance. So Tom has made this solid by whacking lots of little um, indentations around it here, which has crimped the metal onto that, so that's now solid. And he's going to peen this, so this will be solid, and then we will split this apart and stick it together, and this grip will not be holding together the whole tang, the, 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 whole, the whole hilt. And so it should be that bit more solid. You really wouldn't want the wafer-thin sides of this being the things that kept the quillons in place.
It is a very critical stage, uh, and um, I was imagining romantically that I would be peening on the pommel and feeling that this was the, you know, the final full stop at the end of the sentence, but Tom has made it quite clear that it's way too easy to make a pig's ear of it, and so he's going to do it instead. And now we let it cool. Phew. Phew. Hello, tennis elbow in a few years' time. <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, usually, yeah, usually on knives are like there. That's okay. good. Please dry quickly, we need to get on. Getting towards the end of the last day now. It's uh, dark outside, it's getting a bit late and we're trying to get this finished because tomorrow I take the bus home. Um, uh, we've got the, the handle on and so now it's sword shaped and now it's a complete sword. It's not sharp yet. Uh, we're going to put leather around this grip um, and then sharpen it and then it'll be finished. And oh, I suppose we do have to do a bit of repolishing on the pommel which is discolored from, the, uh, from getting too much heat during the uh, the peening process. This, the trouble with putting an edge on a sword and making it all sharp, uh, well, there are, there are a few problems. One is that uh, I won't be able to hand this to members of the public uh, uh, with, a, with a, a clean conscience to have a look at, but actually it's that when you've got something that feels as well balanced as this, and this is, everyone, everyone so far has picked this up and, and gone, oh yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one, it's a, it's a floaty one. Um, you feel that you want to hit something. It's sharp and it's, it's saying to you, go on, go on, hit, hit something with me. Go on, that glass cabinet, that, that log, that, that person over there that you don't like very much. And uh, with a sharp sword, of course, that's uh, probably not a very good idea in, in the, the modern world. But um, yes, yeah, so there'll be that ho horrible temptation every time I pick it up to, yeah, this time, come on, I gotta hit something with it. But, uh, but no, don't worry, fear not, gentle viewer. I, sh I should be very good and though it will be sharp, I will, I will restrain myself, but I don't know, sometimes just think, g -g 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 look out, France! Yes, I am using super glue, which true, isn't very medieval, but it was approaching midnight and Tom really wanted to go home. Now the final stage. We've got the pretty thonging wrapped round the grip, like that, and I've just been told that this is my last opportunity to really foul this up. If I over sharpen uh, a thin bit, I can end up taking a scoop out of the blade and these lovely, these lovely straight uh, converging sides uh, won't be lovely and straight and converging any longer. So uh, it is with a, still some trepidation that I now try to sharpen this. Uh, the angle I'm going for is not the, the, the hollow grind or the straight grind, but uh, the, the, the convex. Uh, type and uh, so uh, fingers crossed. Let's see uh, how well it goes. So I hold it at about 35 degrees on the slack. Yes, on the slack bit. Children, do not do this. It works! Ta-da! Ta-da! Ta -da.